Hi and thank you for watching. This is just a quick how-to video um, to carry out a PC upload and download from your Evacco EA CIA control equipment. So you must remember to obtain your your key um, from the, the building owner, the responsible person of that building. They'll give you access to this enclosure. Um, put your key in. Once your key opens, turns. You can open up the box. You should then have your, your standard MK key uh, and it's clearly identified controls for service and maintenance use only. Open the enclosure. Once you open the enclosure, this is a 32 um, evacuation zone system and you can see our standard infrastructure of the, of the product. So you've got your central processor, battery backup and your fire and rescue service toggle switches. So we take our PC, it's a standard Windows based PC, Windows based laptop, this is a, a Surface. Um, we have our designated USB port, plug into our USB and we, we transfer it down to the PC. So we've opened up our MX Pro series configuration software version 7.50, you see this is the, the latest software that's released to manufacture. Um, please feel free to download the latest software from the Advanced 360 section of our website. Uh, it's a freely available download and the software is regularly updated every three to, to six months. So it's the latest version of software. So what we do is we make sure we've got a, a new configuration file and we click the communications icon. You can see we're communicating to the, the product. We've got the MX Pro 4 um, for loop. Uh, it's a 32 zone evacuation panel. Uh, this is the default base configuration. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've got 8, 16, 24, uh, whatever the amount of evacuation alert zones you have, you can rename this accordingly. But the base program is actually already configured. So the toggle switches, the LEDs, uh, the, the core panel is, is pre-programmed. So what we do is we go to the file menu and we select transfer from panel to PC. Is this a standalone panel? Yes. Okay, a 32 zone. Well, if it's an 18 storey tower block, then 18 evacuation zones typically. So rename the, the file accordingly. So we'll click OK. And you can see it's going to start transferring the, the pre configured data from the control equipment down to your PC. So what this means, it basically means we, we just need to add our sounders, um, assign them to the relevant groups, uh, and configure the, the system. So there's very minimal amount of programming re required. So the transfer is coming down to my PC and data transfer is now complete and it says done. Once it says done, you can now see we've got a, a for loop system ready to configure. So if we click the, the plus sign, so you can see the, the amount of loops we have to, to pre-configure. This depends on the amount of loop drivers you actually have within the control and indicating equipment. So typically anything over, over 10 stories, you should have at least three loops, just to give you an example. But basically what we're doing is we're, we'll just have a, a, a brief overview. So the, the switches on the front of the equipment, you can see are programmed by these switch cards. So if I take a, a switch card and look at the pre-configuration that's already been carried out, um, you can see the output groups are assigned. So these switches, these are evac switches. These are where my toggle switches are connected to. The next one, you can see ground floor, eighth floor to the 15th floor. So depending on the size of the system, will depend on how many of these cards we, we actually have. The, the focus here is we, we start assigning our sounders. So if I've got a sounder on the on the ground floor, flat one, pretty straightforward. Click the AV series, and what we select is the ancillary devices, and what we're looking to, to do is add in our AV sounder or sounder peaking. Uh, you do have the, the option here. So click your sounder. You can see there's address number one. So the objective, most cases, Depending on how many flats you have, it's going to be wired onto a loop. You obviously just click your sounders okay, at the relevant addresses. So you can see how easy it is to, to add the sounders. The, the next objective, click the magnifying glass here. You can see the old default to group 198 and the old default to zone 1. So put them into the relevant zone. So if I anticipate I've got obviously four sounders. 
in zone one. I can select sound in number five and I can allocate you to zone number two. Zone two. There is a feature within our program. Right click your mouse, quick edit, and you can see it's a table. Two, two, three, three, three. And obviously what you need to understand is that you, you need to put in some relevant text. Now remember the text is to identify where that sounder is located. So we all know it's ground floor, so nice and easy. Flat stroke apartment. 001. Okay, remember it's a Windows based platform, so copy, paste, you can put the, the relevant text. Okay, next one again, copy, and so on. Okay, so you get the idea with the location text. The, the other key element is then the output group number. Okay, you can see by default all sounders default to group 198, which is a common fair group. We have some pre programmed groups here. So if I click close, if we go to view, edit, output, cause and effect, you can see our pre-programmed system. So you can see straight away, group 100 is when the ground floor is active. That means when I toggle the switch, you can see there, toggle the switch, pre-programmed button, group 100 will turn on. Okay, group 100 is the ground floor. You have the same pattern, group 101 is the first floor, second floor, third floor and so on. So very straightforward, so you understand we're starting from group 100. What we then do is we go back to our sounders. Okay, so you've got the sounders on the system, click your magnifying glass. I would recommend using the quick edit function. So quick edit, okay, keep it nice and easy, simple and easy. And you can say, okay, straight away, group 100. Next one, group 100. Next one, group 100. And you get the idea. So putting the sounders into the relevant group will then make sure they, they activate. So 101, 101, 101, 102. And you'll see there'll be a, a pattern emerge. So once you're happy with your, your sounder configuration, close your design. And then our aim is to transfer the information back into the, the panel. So save the current configuration file. I would also recommend going to your assistance menu and carrying out a check design. It will help spot any obvious errors. Click OK. Check design. Okay, so it's the 18 zone evac panel. It's going to tell me what's wrong with the system. So you can see, check in the current design. And it's taught me no location text for loop four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So it's basically, it's telling me to, to go away, put my text in, and make sure that the system comes back and everything reports okay. So it's a basic error checking tool. So not fussed about the report. I'm happy. Just want to test the system. I can put my text in the later date if I want to. We're then going to transfer the information from the PC to the, the evacuation system. So what we do is we click our communications icon. You can see you're talking to the product. That was what it was pre-programmed with. I've obviously changed that to 18 zone. But if I click transfer configuration data from PC to panel, you'll see you have the icon here. Transfer. It's going to run through the design check. Yep, OK, I'm happy to proceed. And it's transferring the data from my PC into my control panel. It will be recommended for, for more detailed um, configuration. Uh, we do have training modules available online. So look at our website and, and get booked onto your next 8629 training course. Saving settings to, to flash. And data transfer is complete. So what you can do now, that system is now configured, done. And you can now go and transfer your information or carry out your, your walk testing of the system and test make sure that everything works. I hope this how-to video has helped.